The good part of programming is that same problem can be solved in multiple ways. And you know the bad part? The bad part of programming is the same problem can be solved in multiple ways. Yes, that's good and bad both. Now that's where design patterns come into picture, which gives you the proven way of solving certain problems that some of the other developers have solved following that and they found a great result and they're leaving it for you so that you also can follow the same path, also get the great result. Welcome back to the day 12 of 15 days of React design patterns. Very, very proud to bring this entire course for free in front of you, going deeper every day on each of the React design patterns to make sure that you understand where to use them, why to use them, what are the anti-patterns, what are the use cases, real life projects, and of course, the task and assignments related to that. Today, we are going to talk about an underrated pattern, slot pattern. When we think of React, we think of components, isn't it? The slot pattern allow the consumer of a component to put the content of that component into well-defined places or slot. You are seeing this image, right, on your screen. This white color square, imagine that, is the component now inside that component there are some defined places which is defined by these blue rectangles over here and what you can do if you are consuming this white color component as a consumer of the component you can place your content on these well-defined slots and there are various ways that you can place your content inside these well-defined slots which bring the idea of this slot pattern. I mentioned that it is an underrated pattern because not many are using this pattern knowing that it's a slot pattern. They might be using it a version or a couple of version of it. So the idea today is to make you aware of almost all possible versions of slot patterns with examples, showing you the examples so that you can start recognizing them next time you review any code or you have certain thought process of building certain component you can think oh can i use slot pattern in this place and that's where i'm also going to give you certain use cases towards the end where you can directly apply this pattern let's clear up certain mental model first slot what does it mean it means a hole or a placeholder now that hole and placeholder may or may not have a name that means it can be a named placeholder or without name placeholder inside a component where the component can place other UI component. We have already seen it with a picture and this is the definition of it. The first example we're going to see is called single default slot or the children slot. And this is a pattern I'm sure like most of you are aware and using. Here is a simple card component. You know, the card component inside that you can keep other card header, card body, card footer, card image, etc. So this is simple slot card component which takes a children now using this children react allows you to pass any component and you use this children inside this component so here the slot is nothing but this guy that's what you're going to fill in while utilizing or using or consuming this default slot card component in any other component you will be passing a component as an argument and that will come and replace this children over here in this slot so this is a very very simple example how are you going to use that? I have another component called default slot demo where I have imported that default slot card. And as you're seeing inside this default slot card, I can pass anything. I can pass another React component. I can pass a bunch of HTMLs over there. Any JSX, any valid JSX, I should be able to pass. I should be able to wrap and pass over here. So this is what is going to get placed, this H3 and P. Once it goes inside this default slot card, this particular children is the combination of those two tag and that is going to get replaced over here, right? If you see it on the UI, this is the div and inside that div, this H3 and P is what we were passing. They are replacing the children slot and getting placed in that particular slot. So this is an example of a single default slot, which most of us might be already using. Let's take a look into another flavor. Now let's talk about named slots in case of named slots there will be well-defined region inside your component and as we say those are well-defined that means those will have their respective names now based on those names other components or other jsx or other html can be injected and can be replaced in that individual slot the one that you're seeing on your screen there's something called user profile at the top imagine that's the header slot then there is something called biography and details that's a content slot and there is something called follow that probably a footer slot 
Now, if I imagine thing in this way for this card, I can create named slots inside this card. And then each of this name like header, content, footer can be replaced by other bunch of JSX or the component itself. That's the fundamental thing for the name slot. Can you see this as implementation in code? Here I have a component called card with slots. And as you are seeing, I am passing header, content, footer and some style. Some style, let's ignore the style for now. If we want to pass any additional style from outside, we can do it. But let's ignore Main thing related to slots are this header, content and footer. Now if we see this header, I am using this header over here. Header is a slot and this slot is defined by this prop. So we call it as a name slot or the slot prop. Both the names are applicable. So header is a slot prop. Consumer pass the header which should be a react node. It means any valid JSX. It could be a valid JSX wrapped inside a component or just the JSX which is a valid react node. So this header can be a valid react node, content should be a valid react node, footer also should be a valid react node. Now wherever the slots are placed like this header, content and the footer in these places whenever I am consuming this card with slots component I should be able to pass a bunch of react node to replace these slots. So if I see how this will be consumed, the card with slots, I have card with slots demo where I have imported this card with slots. And as you are able to see that header, content, footer are, are three props. And in each of these props, I am passing valid React node. Here I am passing just the HTML or the JSX part of it. I should be able to pass any other React component also with this. So this is a pattern, guys, which is very well known as slot pattern. I'm sure like you might be using some of this thing, but just to call out is known as slot pattern where you can pass a bunch of React node as a props because you have to identify them by their names. The name is defined by each of this prop name inside this component, this card with slots component so that individual slots can be replaced with the actual value. Hence, each slot is just a prop of type react node that's the thing that you need to remember parent just supply the content and what child is doing over here child is defining the actual layout like how the layout is going to be this is a good one this is a good pattern to follow when number of slots are small they're a little bit static in nature they're not changing too much you want to build certain kind of layout functionality you're probably not using nextjs or any other framework you're into raw react want to get layout kind of functionality this is a pattern that can come really handy where you want to structure your component and then fill the slot based on what you need in each of the section of the component i hope that makes sense a lot let's now move to the next version of it i was talking about the layout you can see a layout over here right this left side is a sidebar where you have a bunch of menu items and the right side you have a title then a content and the footer looks like a layout right now if we want to take advantage of the named slot approach, the pattern that I have just now spoken, you have to then pass this content of menu as a prop. You have to pass this title as a prop. You have to pass this content as a prop. You have to pass this foot as a prop, right? So it means you have to pass four props, at least for this example. That might be overwhelming sometime. That's when the next version of slot patterns come into picture, which we also called as named slot map. Okay, named slot map. What it is here consumer instead of passing each of these props value it pass an object of slots the object contain key and value pairs that's what object is in javascript and each of this key value pair determines which slot to locate and on that slot what react node to inject this is useful when you generate slots dynamically you don't have the static things or when you want to inject a bunch of react nodes into a bunch of slots and you don't want to pass them as individual props can you see an example yes here goes an example of a named slot map why are we calling it as named again because the slot can be identified by a prop and the prop name so here we are passing a prop called slots which is an object in this object there could be variety of named properties we need a sidebar we need a header, we need a content area, we need a footer. That means I have to pass the content for each of those properties. That's where I can query them as slots.sidebar, slots.header, slots.content, slots.footer. And you are seeing that wherever the sidebar content is required, I can inject in that particular slot. I am not injecting sidebar in the header, right? 
the header place I am injecting header, content place, content, footer place, footer. Now, whoever the consumer of this slot map layout, they have to make sure that they are passing the sidebar related content into the sidebar property, header related content in the header property and so on. So can we see the consumer part of it? Yes. So this is where I'm consuming this slot map layout, which was taking slots as an object. And I'm passing the value of slots as an object itself. And here you can see the header is a React node, a H1. Sidebar is a nav, another React node. Content is a React component itself, which we were talking about. Footer, another React node. Now this header, sidebar, content, and footer will go inside this sitemap layout as part of the slots so that I can now do slots.sidebar, slots.header, slots.content, slots.footer and then get the individual React node and can replace them in this individual slots. That's why it is called named slot map because I'm passing a map of name versus their respective React node that will be replacing the slots in actual. Now let me teach you something real fun. So we have learned about this compound component patterns in the beginning of 15 days of React design pattern, if you remember. And we're also using slot patterns on day 12. I have often found developers get confused between these two. The reason being that the nature through which we use them. For example, the one that you're seeing on your screen right now is a slot pattern where you have this card with slots component and you have three slots defined inside this card with slots component. One is being header, another being content, another being footer. And you pass the value for them and the value should be valid React node, which will go and replace the slot and sit over there. Then once we start seeing the compound component pattern or try to think, oh, there is something called compound component pattern, which is also doing the similar things. No, first of all, syntactically entirely different. This is what the compound component pattern was. If you remember, we have developed model, we have developed various different things. So what we do over here, here we do a pure composition. That means you have a card compound component. Inside that I have to define a header. I can supply this enter component over there, composition way. Then I need a body. I supply this over there and then I need an action. I supply it over there. These two are way different from each other. The fundamental differences are with slot, what we're seeing right now, you can easily pass built-in nodes from anywhere, right? That's what we see. Whereas in the compound pattern, you typically compose your component in line one by one. Here we are composing, here we are composing, here we are composing, right? In case of a compound component pattern, a parent component expose the subcomponents, right? This is the parent component. My card component is a parent component which expose a bunch of subcomponent. You remember header, then you have body and then the consumer, which is over here, need to structure them explicitly. This is where you are actually accessing your card component dot header and pushing anything inside it. Here you are accessing this and again pushing inside it. But in case of slot, the idea is different. The so slot pattern never handles that complexity. It is very, very straightforward. It just open up the slot and you have to keep injecting the React node to replace the slot, as simple as that. Now you can say when you are developing your component using compound component pattern and you have these children, ultimately these children itself is getting replaced by this one. Am I not using slot inside the compound component pattern? Yes, you are using. You are using that first version of default slot that I have taught you. So the compound component pattern, you are actually using the slot pattern, but slot pattern has other variation where the name slots are exposed using the props and the value could be a react node or could be a map. Those are way different than what compound component pattern does. I hope this difference is very clear to you. Here is a cheat sheet for you. It's like, you know, what are the different cases you can use this slot pattern? I have created one for you. Model or dialogue is one straightforward case where you have the header, body, footer, card. We have seen you have, you know, card header, media content, action button, etc. Layout, we have seen the sidebar, you have header, you know, content, footer, etc. Then you can have toolbar where you have this left, center, right, you know, that sort of regions in the toolbar and you can actually inject the component on those slots. Then you can have form where form can have label, help icon, error level, etc. Data table, another beautiful things where you have the header sales slot, you have row slot 
and the custom renderers. So this is something that been used, this design pattern widely in many of the grids. You pick up some of the well-known grids, you will find this pattern inside. Notification toast can have the icon, content area, closables, editors where you have the toolbar slots for the button, you know, and even the CMS. CMS block have the content region injected by the CMS that also can be used as slot pattern. So these are variety of things and there are more actually. These are, these are some of them that I can think of if I have to think some real world project using slot pattern. I can pick up any of them and today whatever you have learned about the slot patterns, you can start practicing them by building anything. But don't worry about it. I have some task for you. All right, let's talk about the task of day 12. So here are your tasks, two simple tasks. First task is to create a toolbar, a responsive toolbar with collapsing slot. What does it mean? Build a toolbar component with three name slot. You know what is name slots. So one is start, center and end. On the smaller screen, when you are working in the responsive mode, right? The content of the center slot should move into an overflow menu. So that is what you need to tackle with Tailwind or whatever you want to do. So your deliverables are toolbar.jsx, a demo page showing responsiveness and the slot usage. Here you will be learning about slot handling, responsive composition, etc. Second one, again, using the same slot pattern, create a toast or notification with slot based template. Implement a toast system where each toast accepts slots like icon, message, and action. Action are like close, you know, that kind of action. Provide an API to register toast templates and show toast with different slot content. Your deliverables are toast manager, example templates like success, error, info. These are the templates that I can think of. You're learning again dynamic slot templates with programmatic rendering the dynamic rendering basically so try to do this too if something is not clear you know where to come we got our discord right where you can find 15 days of react design pattern come to general you can start discussing things come to task assignments you can post about your tasks that folks are posting you can see day 08 day 07 like that people are posting the task all the source code that you have seen today they are on github.com slash tapascript. Please follow this organization because there are a lot of other fantastic repositories you can get access to and notification. So go inside repositories. You will find 15 days of React design patterns. And once this video is published, you should be able to see day 12 coming over here. Here you will have all the code. Don't forget to give a start to this repository if you like my work. So my friends, that's all for today. Day 12 is over. Now it's remaining 13, 14, and 15. Another three React design patterns. And with that, this course is over. And now I have to start thinking, what am I going to do next? What am I going to bring in front of you? So on Tapascript channel, under the community tab, the post tab, we already started discussion about what to do next. I am getting certain recommendation like bring a backend course, do something about Next.js, Express, with Mon stack, variety of things. And I have few other things in mind that I'll be hosting live with you very soon to discuss, decide, and declare what i'm going to start next stay tuned subscribe to tapascript so that you don't miss out on any of the content that i publish and it will be great support if you subscribe and give me motivation to create great content for you we'll be back soon again